Fight night may have been scheduled for Thursday, but the punches are still being thrown long after the closing arguments of the debate. With me now to discuss it all, the best political team on television, Patty Solis Doyle, CNN political contributor, Ken Cuccinelli, president of the Senate Conservatives Fund, Bakari Seller, CNN political contributor, and Anna Navarro, CNN political commentator. You're a commentator. <laughs> These two are contributors. Just so you know, I just want to make sure. They contribute I, something. I just talk. <laughs> just working our way up. Working just our way up. Make sure we have that straight. They just found me on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, let me just ask you. Donald Trump says he was talking about Megyn Kelly's nose and her ears. Carly Fiorina didn't seem to buy it. John Kasich, I couldn't really tell what he thought, but I don't think he bought it either, but, but he didn't say that. What do you think? You know, I actually think he was just spewing that he didn't much think about it. But you're a candidate for president, you're the front runner. Whenever you're going down that line, it's going to be interpreted in as many different ways as it can be. It was a huge mistake. He ought to admit it was an error, apologize, and try to move on. I don't think you can really move on and set this one beside behind you. But the other comment that some of the candidates have made is, look, if, if you're going to whine about how Megyn Kelly treats you, how are you going to deal with Vladimir Putin? Or before that, Hillary Clinton. Um, yeah. So Jeb Bush... Or uh, Jake Tapper in the next debate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Jeb. God we're not going to be having this discussion <laughs> about you, Jake. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. So Jeb Bush uh, took on the Donald, and you heard what he had to say, Mr. Trump. He said uh, he started go talking about Jeb Bush's gaffe the other day, talking about, I don't know that we need a half billion dollars spent on women's health issues. Uh, and he started going at uh, Jeb Bush, who you support very strongly. What would you think of that? Uh, look, I, I think it's just the Trump shtick, right? That's what he does. He He's now beginning to be incredibly repetitive. To me, it's Groundhog Day. It's a broken record. I'm rich. Lindsey Graham has no polling. Uh, Jeb Bush is this, has no energy. I mean, all he does is go after the people running against him and, you know, Trump himself up. I mean, he, th th this is the man that is so appropriately named because all he does is blow his own trumpet. And absolutely, we all know what he was talking about when he was referring to Megyn Kelly. So this you don't buy it? You no, don't buy I the don't news? Buy it. And the reason okay. I don't buy it is because this is not an isolated occurrence from Donald Trump. Everybody should go on the Washington Post and read an article there today about his long, lengthy, years-long record of disparaging women and saying vile, mean things about women or, frankly, anybody that may, may, you know, be somewhat critical of him. This is not a guy that has got a presidential temperament, period, close. You obviously want to say But that. this isn't the end of, John, of, of Donald Trump. I mean, just no. two weeks ago we were here talking about Donald Trump and John McCain, and is this going to be the end of his campaign? I sit back and laugh at my Republican friends because we've been getting ignorant we, attacks. We, we really appreciate uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> ignorant attacks against the president from Donald Trump. This is the same man who took a $5 million bounty out on the president's birth certificate because he still believed he was from Africa. So we're sitting back having a good chuckle because he's not doing anything but rising in the polls. He's at 34% in South Carolina, and that's dangerous. That's fact, a problem. Let me ask you, you used to be Hillary Clinton's campaign manager back in 2008. She has been very, very quiet about Donald Trump, especially over the weekend. <laughs> uh, it could be a Trump versus Hillary matchup. Is this, is this the right thing for her to do? Just sit back and let the let the Republican Party destroy itself? Let or? him shoot himself. Yeah. yeah. Look, uh, he's not going to be the nominee. Let's he hope has. So. He's, I don't know. he's I mean... not. As much as we would like it, he's not going to be the nominee because he's just made himself unelectable in a general election. With that but comment he, about Megyn Kelly, or, well, or in general? Here, here's the deal: for a Republican candidate to win a national election, they have to peel away at that coalition that Barack Obama built in 2008 and maximized in 2012. Right? And up until now, their best shot at doing that was with Hispanics and with women. Donald Trump has officially offended Hispanics and all women. Or as he calls them, party the line. Hispanics. Right. Oh, who yeah. who's supposedly love him in and his the parallel blacks, universe. The so what the he's done, too, the yeah, so what he's done is he's put immigration and a war on women front and center in this election. And guess what? That's at the detriment of Republicans. And that galvanizes the coalition for the nominee for, for, on the Democratic Party. Ken, I'll let you have a last shot, and then I want to move on to another topic. You know, uh, the, the reason he's risen isn't, of course, these kinds of comments. It's because he is sort of this conduit for anti-establishment uh, just anger yeah. in the Republican base. But on the Democrat side, that's a big part of Bernie Sanders' rise, is Hillary Clinton is viewed as the concrete cornerstone of the establishment on the Democrat side. And so you see this massive rise over there. Very different person, very different circumstances. But across this country, across parties, they're clearly fed up with the way Washington is doing business, and that candidates are going to do best in both parties who have a demonstrated record 
of being willing to challenge that kind of leadership. That's interesting. And let's talk about Bernie Sanders because he was in Seattle over the weekend and he was trying to give a speech uh, in this, in this yeah. big crowd and he was shut down uh, by some activists with the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, group. Uh, there's, there he is. They, they interrupted the speech and he wasn't able to, to talk. Um, and afterwards, uh, some of these activists uh, said that this demonstrates how out of touch Bernie Sanders is with the Black Lives Movement. Um, we, we've talked about this movement before. Uh, now we see them really having an effect uh, on Democrats, not Republicans, on Democrats. Right. Look, I, I mean, I think we were talking in the green room. I don't remember the last time that uh, protesters and activists actually stopped a rally before. I don't remember that happening. You know, I think this says to me this is a force to be reckoned with, and the Democrats need to have answers to their questions. Now, uh, Bakari, I know you support Hillary Clinton. The supporters of Bernie Sanders say... This guy has been fighting for civil rights and fighting against income inequality and for justice reform for decades. Why are they picking on him? Well, nobody's picking on Bernie Sanders by any stretch. Bernie Sanders has a real serious problem, though. He's been dismissive of the Black Lives Matter movement, refusing to meet with him and other things. And he hasn't even put forth a criminal justice platform. I was on his website this morning. Again, it's not even up yet. Um, there's, so there's certain things that Bernie Sanders must do. He, he went a step in the right direction. I understand he just hired Simone Sanders, a new communications director for his campaign. But look, you know, marching with Dr. King 50 years ago, I understand that. My father did as well. But my father also understands that Black Lives Matter is a new movement. We need new answers for 2015. And that is what we're thirsting for. We want those answers. We want him to address those questions and not just come out and be dismissive and say, hey, give me a pass because I marched with Dr. King 50 years ago. On the one-year anniversary of Michael Brown, today I can tell Bernie that's not going to cut it. Well, you must be enjoying this the same way that the Democrats are enjoying uh, Donald Trump uh, causing all the kerfuffles he is. You must be enjoying the sturm and drang about Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, Black Lives Matter. I I'm just sorry it's not getting any more airtime. I'm just sorry that Donald... <laughs> I'm trying. That, that, you, know, you know, that Donald Trump is <laughs> sucking up all the oxygen and we're not seeing all the uh, division and, and strife and craziness that's going on on their side. To me, it was unbelievable to see, frankly, what was a handful of protesters mm -hmm. stop and disrupt and put an end to what were thousands of Democrats there thousands upon thousands waiting for over an hour, maybe even much more than that, to listen to Bernie Sanders. So I'm not sure that that is... Are they getting attention? Absolutely. Are they getting allies? I'm not sure that that's well, the best I mean, way of doing it. You can disagree with the protest. And the event was that's not, that, that's not a Social Security That's not right, a problem. It wasn't right. Social Security and Medicare you, you event. Can, you can disagree with the protest tactic. But what we saw two weeks ago in Cincinnati shows that this is a real problem when the officer shot the young kid, just point blank in the head. We have a new hashtag right now. It's Christian Taylor, another young African-American unarmed kid who was killed by police in Texas. So this is going on and on and on. And you may like the protest tactic or hate the protest tactic, tactic but that message is powerful and it's going to be here. I All right, Bakari, Anna, Patty, Ken, thanks so much for being here.